Rock 103 on the Bear. I am Tommy and hanging out with Dave from Theory of a Dead Man. And uh, these guys headlined our show last year, man. And, and uh, I really appreciate that, man. You guys did a great job, and our listeners are still talking about it. Well, that's what we try. That's the, that's what we strive for with every show is for the listeners to continue to talk about us even after we leave. That was a great show, man. Really loved it. I really appreciate it, too. Now, where did you guys record Savages at, the brand new record? You know, we did it with a lot of the same people, Howard Benson, and so we work out of California, uh, but a different studio than before. Uh, the, uh, Howard Benson actually bought a house and built a studio in the house, so it's a little bit of a different atmosphere, and we were bugging them because we said, man, there's no there's no vibe in this studio. You gotta, you gotta hang some lights up and do... And so the whole time we were in there, he was trying to make it vibey for us. But yeah, we did it all in California. We did it over uh, two different sessions, and uh, it's uh, just, just now finally getting finished mixing going for mastering hopefully very soon and, and out to the listeners July 8th. Now, um, I noticed the song Drown and it's, it sounds like a new progression for Theory of a Dead Man. Is there um, a newer sound to what you guys have been doing or is this that's how that song turned out? It's definitely a new sound I think for this record. We, uh, we took some, spent a little time soul searching making sure we knew the direction we wanted to go in that we didn't just, you know, necessarily do what we've done in the past. We we really took a conscious effort to to change the sound, and you know, there's been in the past there's been a little confusion about Theory of a Dead Man, where we lie, if we're a rock band, or we've had some pop songs, and you know, there's always been pressure to sort of sit in the middle, and we just wanted to do a record that was on the ends, you know. So we wanted to do a heavy record, and thankfully Roadrunner was on on board with that idea. And we, uh, we really just focused on writing a lot of great rock songs on this record, so it's, it's full of rock. Well, Roadrunner's definitely on board for heavy, that's for sure, and that's a good thing. Yeah, you know, you never know, because uh, just like, you know, with, the, with labels too, you know, it's a, such a political game. You never know who wants what, right? There's always pop departments that want this, and these people that want this, and you just got to remember that when you're the band, it's more about what you want and not, not about what everyone else wants for you. But it's also too we can't forget the fans you know they gotta like it too i agree and you know what that's uh that's something we think uh this record is a uh, is most similar we think to our first record which almost sounds like it would be a step backwards but only because our first record was like a riff rock heavy record i think that the fans are hungry for this from us you know sometimes you you know there's there's a little bit of humor and that you'll get that with theory of a dead man but for the most part, this is a little bit of a more serious departure for us, and I think we just wanted to show people that we can be a rock band. We can, there can be kick-ass solos and double kick, and and we can do all that stuff too. So we just wanted to show another side of our band. By the way, I love the first record. Sonically, it's one of the best sounding records. Every instrument on it, I can hear perfectly. That's good. That's a good thing. You know what? It was. Uh, I, I look back now, and I mean, you're talking 2002 that came out. We were in the studio, end of 2001. Here we are 13 years later. Man, we're just a couple of kids, just, just green thumbs. You know, we didn't know what we were doing. But, uh, you, you know, you look back and, and see how much has changed. But, yeah, I agree, man. I love that first record. And we still have a huge following that loves that first record. So I think that we're going to have some excited fans this time around. Now, um, when you go in the studio, I know there's the recording part. And there's what is the part of the studio when you're recording that's some of the most fun? I mean, I know the creativity and stuff, but what's the most fun that you just get really fi fired up about yourself? I really get fired up when we record drums because it's the only real time in the studio when everyone's all playing together. And it's it's important that there be a real feel to the songs for Joe because he needs to capture it on drums. And then, and then after that, it's kind of like everybody's working on their own. But I really love just sort of playing along when Joe's recording drums because it's it's almost like that pressure to really you you have to nail the whole song for the, for Joe's sake you know so he can nail the whole song so I really love doing the drum recording even though you know I'm not the drummer and they're not recording what I'm playing it's really a, a cool part of the of the process. Now when you guys are out on the road and you're out for a long time, you know, and there are a lot of downtime sometimes in a plane or in a bus. What what do you do to pass the time sometimes, you know? Well, Tyler just bought a PS4 recently, so uh we uh our our video gaming just got more elevated. We but you know, unfortunately, they don't have NHL hockey for the PS4 yet, which 
PlayStation, what were you thinking? I mean, there is a whole country up north there where we just do nothing but play. Theory has a song available for that very same video game. Oh yeah, we sent uh, we sent a song to to EA Sports and said, put us on this. Nobody plays as much hockey as we do. But yeah, we do play some video game hockey, and uh, you know, we're just uh, you, you try to see a little bit of the cities when you get the chance, but. It's always weather dependent and dependent on where you're parked and stuff like that. But, you know, downtime is mostly just hanging out with the family, which is, you know, our band and crew. All right. Um, America has the Grammys. Canada has the Junos. And I know you guys have been there. You've played and everything. As comparing the, as I think the Grammys do the worst job in the rock category, it's, I mean, I'm going to say it. Grammys, you suck. You don't rock at all. But, I mean, what... Do you think do the Junos actually do a better job in that department, or is it that political everywhere? You know what? I, I, I have my own theory about why the Junos and the Grammys and every and the MTV, the, why they all ignore rock. And that's because rock doesn't care about awards. And the Grammys and the Junos, they know it. They want to they make rock a bigger thing, but then they talk, you know, you bring in a rock guys, and they're all kind of like, eh, we won a Grammy, who cares? I just think rockers, man, it's never been about that. You know, I went to Jerry Cantrell from Alice in Chains' house for a poker game one time. I went to use the restroom and he had his MTV Music Award dispensing toilet paper. And I was like, this is really and truthfully what rockers think of awards, you know? Like, guys, they just don't care. So, you know what, I don't know. I don't know if the Junos do it better. We actually won a Juno for our first record, Best New Rock Group. And they haven't even invited us back since. So I don't know if we if we disappointed them or what happened. But anyway, I think that there's just no place for awards in rock and roll, man. We just don't care. It was the best answer ever. I thank you so much, Dave. Dave from Theory of a Dead Man. Savages, when's that come out? July 8th, and make sure you go pick it up. Yes, buy two. I'm Tommy at your Rock 1039 the Bear.